medical team by her side this morning. Malala Yousafzai was medevaced to a hospital in northern England to get the special physical and psychological care she desperately needs. Over the weekend, her doctor said Malala is showing some signs of improvement, moving her hands and legs, but she is still in critical condition. The brave 14-year-old girl was directly targeted by the Taliban last week, who stormed her bus and shot her in the head as she came home from school. Her crime? fighting for the rights of all girls to an education. With a massive show of support and an outpouring of grief, with vigils all over Pakistan. A nation united in helping this young activist who wanted to change the lives of other young Two men approach a Pakistani school bus like this one, men with beards and a gun, a Colt 45. One of them climbs on the bus and asks a question. Who is Malala? She doesn't remember what happened next, but her friend described the moment. He fired three, three bullets, and one hit you on the left side of, uh, of, of my head. I would have been doing like this. So I hide my face because there was gunpowder on my fingers. She is bleeding in grave condition, but two hours pass before a helicopter can deliver her from the local hospital to a military surgeon. He spends five hours trying to relieve the swelling on her brain and remove tiny clots. By a strange coincidence, there is someone in Pakistan for the first time. A top specialist in pediatric trauma from England, Dr. Fiona Reynolds, with her colleague, Dr. Javid Kayani. They've been sitting in long governmental meetings on medical programs when suddenly Dr. Reynolds is told to race out and try to save the life of a famous and dying child. The tubes have given Malala an infection. The machines are improperly set. Her blood isn't clotting. Her lungs and kidneys are beginning to fail. She had become septic. It was obvious that she had a very serious life-threatening infection. Dr. Reynolds makes a risky recommendation to take the gravely ill girl on an eight-hour trip to a high-tech hospital in England. From another Muslim country comes a life-giving offer. The Emir of the United Arab Emirates sends one of his royal planes outfitted as a hospital, a state-of-the-art intensive care unit. And for the entire eight-hour flight to England, Dr. Reynolds and Dr. Kayani keep Malala alive, breath by breath, organ by organ. And they also have noticed something else that defies possibility. The bullet took a path that simply cannot be believed. The chances of being shot at point-blank range in the head and that happening, I don't know. But it is amazing, truly amazing. I, I don't know why she survived. Maybe his hand was shaky. He hit her there. So it goes under the skin, near the skull. A bullet traveling 1,000 feet per second slips under Malala's skin. But as it heads toward her brain, that bone turns out to be so strong and curved it forces the bullet to ricochet away and instead smashes her eardrum, severs the nerve in her face, and hits her shoulder. The fact that she didn't die on the spot or very soon afterwards, and to my mind, is nothing short of miraculous. Miracle? If you believe in miracles, yes, absolutely. Maybe it's the backbone and here's the brain, and God saved me. But still, doctors have no idea if she'll ever walk or see or be able to speak again. They are amazed when moments after her eyes open, she uses a letterboard to spell out in English the words country and then father. Ahead of her, three months of punishing therapy and more surgery to reconnect the nerve in her face. Through it all, Dr. Reynolds notes of her young patient. I have never seen Malala cry, never. She is incredibly stoical. She had to have some sutures uh, in her uh, wound in her scalp. And she also had to have a needle to drain some um, infected fluid from her neck. And on both occasions, she didn't wince, she didn't cry, she didn't even squeeze my hand when they were sticking needles into her. I didn't cry because now I totally changed after that incident. But I don't know how did I change. I don't know what happened to me. But I have to say, who, who can do this? Her. We all cry. I was feeling that this is a new life. Malala says, she thinks death just wasn't ready for her. I think death didn't want to kill me, and God was with me, and the people prayed for me. And so